overcome. You're listening to the Overcoming Daily Podcast with Anna Johnson of sacredlifecoaching.com. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Anna began her journey of becoming the overcomer coach as a licensed clinical social worker investing over 10 years to helping others in the mental health field. In her experience as a therapist, she became aware that believers are struggling from the same issues as non-believers. Same issues as non-believers. As Anna sought wisdom on this matter, the Heavenly Father inspired her to give up her clinical career in order to serve the body as a coach, to help them in overcoming life and spiritual challenges through kingdom principles. Kingdom principles. And so, the Overcomer Coach was born. Enjoy today's episode, Overcomer. Here's your host of the Overcoming Daily Podcast, Anna Johnson. Shalom. Welcome to episode six of Overcoming Emotional Challenges. My name is Anna Johnson, and I am your Overcomer Coach. In today's episode, we will be discussing embracing rejection and finding your true value. That's right, embracing rejection and finding your true value. It's not uncommon for me to have a client or meet a fellow believer that is wrestling with a spirit of rejection. That's right, a spirit of rejection. A lot of times we think that the things that we experience are simply associated with past pain or trauma or experiences that we've had that have caused our issues. But I will reiterate again, wherever there is human suffering, you will see a spirit. Scripture reminds us that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but we wrestle with principalities in dark places. So we have to remember that we are in the middle of the battlefield and there are spirits working that are trying to crush our spirit, that are trying to hinder us from walking in our true purpose and calling and the joy and the ha- the joy and the happiness and the shalom, the peace that the Father has for us. If anyone has lived long enough, they've experienced some sort of pain. And we must remember that we live in a broken world because of sin. We must remember that we are birthed and conceived in sinful and a sinful body, sinful nature. And so there's just brokenness after brokenness. So we're going to have challenges. And for some, a matter of fact, I would say most people have had some sort of experience with rejection. Now, rejection doesn't have to be a defining moment. However, for some people, especially in childhood, where they've experienced rejection, padded by more rejection, padded by more rejection, this becomes a stronghold on the person. It becomes oppressive. And quite honestly, it creates a problem in the thinking, in the mindset, where the brain is on default sometimes to embrace the messages of rejection, very like habit-wise, without much resistance. So there's much to be discussed today about rejection. And just like anxiety, it's kind of, well, it is tricky and it's crafty. And it will look one way or the other, meaning like polar opposites, just like we saw with the anxiety. Uh, For those of you that are just now listening to one of my podcasts and haven't listened to the one on anxiety, I would encourage you to listen to that. I do believe that's episode four. Um where I talk about anxiety, how a lot of times we think we know what anxiety looks like, but it has two faces. I I suppose you could say it has two, it has two heads. Uh, Rejection has two heads. So it's like a snake with two heads. And we're just going to go ahead and jump into the mindset of rejection and what that sounds like. What does it sound like? And what does it look like? So the mindset of rejection may sound something like this. I'm not valuable. It may say I'm not valuable. It may say my opinion doesn't matter. It may say I better not say that. Like I better not say that. I don't want to cause any problems. I don't want to disturb anybody. It also may sound completely opposite of that statement. And it could say, I'm just going to tell them like it is. 
The other thing is, is it may say something like, well, they look like nice people, or I don't know about talking to that person. See, when we embrace the mindset of rejection, we really start to, let's go back to that first one. I'm not valuable. We start to, when we embrace the mindset of rejection, we start to embrace the messages that are connected with that. And so what is, what does rejection say? It, it says that you're not valuable, that you're unwanted. Um, and so it's, it's very connected to our worth. So it's really important that we, um, refuse to allow that mindset to get into our mind because it is anti Messiah. It's anti Messiah. It's anti creation because we are created in his image and that gives us value and purpose, even when we are rejected. So these are kind of like some, some, some tools that you can use to filter to see if you are actually operating under the spirit of rejection. One, do you feel like your, that your opinion is not valuable? Do you feel like it's not valuable? Are you insecure about sharing your opinion? Or do you feel like you're not valuable? Are you more to gravitate to people that are going to, that you feel more certain that they're going to embrace you and hesitant to like, or lack confidence in approaching those that maybe they, maybe they seem like they may not, they may not accept you. Now, ways that rejection, the spirit of rejection can manifest in our lives is that we may see ourselves being fearful fearful of how others respond to us, fearful about hurting people's feelings, fearful about uh, being rejected by that person or that person looking at us negatively. We may find ourselves being a people pleaser. We may see ourselves devaluing ourselves. And that could be, you could see that devaluing yourself either by your choices um, or either by um, outwardly expression where listen to your language. Do you cut yourself down instead of, um, instead of, you know, honoring yourself and the gifts that Abba's given you by speaking boldly and confidently about the things that Yah has, that, that God has given you and that He's placed in you? Another manifestation is either no boundaries. This is a two head situation. Okay. Either there's no boundaries or there are rigid boundaries. Okay. So, um, no boundaries is where you, like, it's back to that people pleaser thing where, you know, you're always considering everybody else, but you're not taking into account your value, your worth, and what it is that you're called to do and your purpose. Uh, or you may see the, the other side of that, the other head of the spirit is, is it's rigid. It can look like it has a chip on its shoulder where it rejects people before they reject them, who doesn't allow people closely in, avoids rejection by um, being harsh towards people and uh, keeping them uh, kind of like at arm's length emotionally so that they cannot be hurt. And then if that person responds okay to that, then they may let, then, then you may let that person in a little bit. So if you run into somebody that seems like they've got a chip on their shoulder, it's just possible that they may have a spirit of rejection operating in them and they are preventing that they're avoiding being rejected. So they just have a chip on their shoulder or, you know, they're, or they just are not willing to let people in because they may get hurt. And a lot of times when we have this, we don't even know that we're doing this. So, you know, this could very well be some of you that are listening. So, you know, do you have a chip on your shoulder? Do you just push people away even before they come in or sabotage, sabotage relationships? And of course, other manifestations is isolation, where you just say, oh, I'm a loner. I choose to be alone. Or the other part is you can be um, totally an extrovert that has like a zillion friends, but no real close connections. And so you're surrounded by people, but inside you really feel isolated because nobody really knows you because you're just pleasing people. And you may be on eggshells of like, is this, am I going to make this person mad? Or am I going to hurt this person's feelings? Or maybe you don't feel free to really express who you are and have your own opinion and your own insight on things. And again, do you have that negative self-talk or even negative talk outwardly about yourself? When you're telling people about you or you're talking about you, what are you saying about you? 
If you notice that there's like a, a low self-worth uh, statement, low self-esteem, there's usually a spirit of rejection that's operating with that. Now, if any of these things apply to you, again, I reiterate, like many of you hear me that listen to my podcast lately, uh, regularly, do not feel shameful or have feelings of guilt, okay? Many of you, most of you, didn't didn't invite the spirit in to isolate you from people and from connection. This was something that was imposed upon you more than likely during childhood, but it can happen in any time of our lives. I'll use myself as an example. I was raised, I was raised in a small town, very small town, and I was pretty much other than maybe one or two other people in this town of a person of color. But my mother did a very good job of telling me how beautiful I was. My mother is Caucasian, so she would tell me how beautiful I was and how wonderful I was. And she really did a good job in early childhood, like from zero to five, like telling me how beautiful I was and how special I was. So on that first day of kindergarten, I felt confident in who I was. But there was this one kid in my kindergarten class. I won't even put his name out there, but... um. Maybe he'll remember if he's listening to this. He pointed out that I looked different. My skin was brown. Um, and he pointed it out in, in kind of a comical way and kind of made, when I say comical, not in good comic, like making fun of me. And it hurt my feelings a bit, but it didn't define me. And I went through this through the course of my life. I like I said, I was raised in this town and I got used to raise racism. But sometimes this, well, not sometimes, quite often, the spirit of rejection would speak to me. But for me, it wasn't that I lacked value. It was more about I didn't want to be in places that I might be rejected. So if I was going out somewhere like as a teenager and I and my regular friends weren't going to be around or if we were going to go to another, if they were going to go hang out at another small town where the people didn't know me, I would avoid that because I had a fear of like dealing with that, the well, racism, which is basically rejection. You know, I didn't choose the skin tone that I had, um, but I would avoid that because I didn't want to have that experience. And that's just a small example. So, but I'm grateful. Like I said, it shows like from zero to five before I, you know, I went to kindergarten about around age six. It shows that like that conditioning where I had a mother who was telling me and a a grandmother who was telling me and family members around me that didn't see my skin tone. And uh, matter of fact, my mother saw it, but she promoted it like she would tell me that I was beautiful. And um, and she really fed my mind with my skin tone was a blessing. And a, and a beautiful thing. So when I got hit by all of the rejection from like, once you get into school, the rejection and even walking home from school and older kids making comments about me and calling me names. And um, it didn't, I would be sad because that's a normal human response, but it didn't, it didn't cause me to hate myself. Now, the other side of that is Imagine, like sometimes when I work with clients who wrestle with rejection, when we get to the root of it, we, we, we discover that there was a spirit of rejection within the womb where maybe the mother or the father didn't want the child. And that spirit follows that child of being unwanted. And sometimes it's generational where you can see a mother that wasn't wanted by her, by her mother or father. Uh, and a grandmother that wasn't wanted by her mother or father. And then that cycle just continues on and on and on. And it's a spirit of rejection. And then there are those of you that are listening that have been rejected by a spouse, have been rejected even by the church, right? Even by the church, been rejected by the people that you trust and love because you were human. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you didn't do anything wrong. Um, like in my case, what did I do wrong? I was born with brown skin. What could I do about that? Right? I was created in the image that he wanted me to be created in. 
And many people that, like I said, that are wrestling with rejection, we see rejection, that spirit of rejection, usually, not always, enters in, in childhood, somewhere or another, where maybe you were, maybe you were just felt like you were, um, felt like you were a nuisance or unwanted or just work or trouble, or maybe you were constantly fed negative messages about yourself, which basically just reinforced the spirit of rejection, being like, I'm unwanted because A, B, and C. Well, one of the first keys to overcoming is one, refuse to reject yourself. Let's stop feeding the mind negative messages. And what I mean by that is, Let's stop saying these negative things out loud and let's squash them in our heads. Okay. So, you know, if you find yourself like, oh, I'm an idiot or I, you know, I'm so stupid or, you know, what do I know? Or all I do is make mistakes. Whatever negative messages you're saying about yourself that gives the spirit of rejection an opportunity to work. Remember, spirit of rejection, it comes to make you feel alone, but it also comes to attack your value, like how you feel about your worth. It also works with the spirit of fear. There's a large fear there, like that fear to embrace and become who you were called and created to be, like you're afraid because rejection, rejection and fear and anxiety and all, and all those work together to prevent you from fulfilling your created purpose. So stop being a participant in the rejection. Part of that embracing rejection is start with embracing you, embracing you, loving you and refusing to be a participant. Another step to overcoming the spirit of rejection is getting to the root of it, getting to the root of it. Where did it come from? Where did the spirit get in? And take some time, pray about it or hire a coach that gets to the root of issues like myself or pray about it and fast about it or seek someone that has discernment and spiritual wisdom on such on these matters and has the gifts to help you with this. But get to the root of it and find out where it came from, because when you get to the root of a weed and you dig that root up, the likelihood of it returning is is very low, is very low, you know. So especially you've got to get it all. Sometimes it's hard to get all of the roots to a weed. Uh, You'll think it's dead and then it'll spring back up. Uh, But it won't be as big as it was the first time, right? So hopefully it'll be a weak plant. But get to the root of it. Like spend some time like was I rejected in childhood? What were the messages that I heard? Where does this come from? Did my mom want me while she was pregnant with me? These are things that you can work towards getting to the root of your, of this wrestling with this low self value. Maybe it's some sort of trauma. Maybe you were abused and then you, then the enemy came in and told you it was all your fault or told you that it was truth. Maybe you embrace some lies that were not truth. Maybe you let the world speak to you about you instead of you speaking to the world about you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not casting blame on anyone that's going through this, especially if you. this is something that you experienced in childhood. You didn't choose this. However, you're an adult now. You are an overcomer by the blood of the lamb. And it is our responsibility to reject the lies of the enemy. So the other part, another key to overcoming is to renew the mind. Make sure you're reading the word, the word of God. What does the word of God say about you? And so, like I said earlier, like the body is impacted, the mind, the brain is impacted by negative messages. You know, there it takes a negative message to, you know, one negative message. It takes like three positive messages to try to um, neutralize these evil thoughts. Okay. So renew the mind by reading the word of God and then speaking the word of God out, out loud, listening to the word of God, bringing healing to the mind. And as we bring healing to the mind, eventually the heart will get on board. And part of bring, uh, renewing that mind is, is the, the second part of that is rejecting the lies, like kicking those lies out. Kicking those like, oh, you better not say that because you might make that person mad at you. No, kick it out. See, my opinion is valuable. 
You know, I am valuable. I am a child of God. My voice matters. We're all created to speak the word of God. Yeah, willing, if we don't have any issues with, you know, deafness or muteness. But if you've got a voice and you're able to use it, then use it for the glory of God. So reject the lies, kick those lies out, speak the truth. The other part of um, a, a very important key here is to embrace rejection for the sake of Messiah. Some of you listening have been avoiding rejection. And in, in avoiding rejection, you are not walking as Messiah did. Okay. So meaning like maybe you're not saying the things you are called to say. See, this is how the spirit of rejection works. It calls the, it, it comes to try to create us to be an ineffective people in all areas of our life. You know, so in, in business, in re- interpersonal relationships, in our, what we reach for goal setting. Um, it, it, it tries to go global on us, but it'll take whatever area it can get. Messiah. I mean, my goodness, we know that he knew rejection. We know that his disciples knew rejection. We know that God's prophets knew rejection. We know that God's called ones new rejection. We know that God himself knows what it's like to be rejected. And did any of them avoid rejection? I think not. They embraced it. Did, did we, do we not think that Messiah didn't know that he was going to be rejected before he came here to earth? Did we, do we think that God, the father didn't know that the people of Israel would reject him in the wilderness? Did he avoid rejection? No, he embraced it. And we too must embrace rejection. And when I mean by embracing rejection, I'm not talking about agreeing with it. I'm talking about just going ahead and accepting that rejection is just a part of whatever process that you've got to, it's part, well, one, it's a part of life. Um, but just going ahead and embracing it and holding tight to it till it produces life. And this is a mindset issue, okay? Now, I'm not encouraging you guys to go out. If people are continually rejecting you, you've got to know when to shake your, shake the dust off your sandals and, and keep on moving, right? Uh, that's not, I'm not saying to reject people. I'm talking about just embracing rejection as a whole. Go ahead and embrace it. If people reject me, they reject me. That's okay. It's okay. My God was rejected. The saints of old were rejected. The prophets were rejected. I'm in great company. But the spirit of fear and the spirit of rejection partner and, and, and anxiety, they partner together to take to try to take children of God down or just people in general down. And what it'll say is like, well, you, you know, you don't the spirit of fear say, well, you don't want to be rejected. You don't want to go through that. And next thing you know, we start to feel rejected even before we have that rejected experience. And then another key to overcoming the spirit of rejection is to identify with your value in God or in Messiah. Who are you in Messiah? Identify with that. Identify with it. Let it, t- let it become the essence of who you are, that it radiates and it bubbles out of you. And Lastly, but this is not an all-inclusive list, but for the sake of time, we're going to stop here. Lastly, get support. Like if you're wrestling with low self-value, if you're wrestling with the spirit of rejection where you feel rejected, or maybe you're actually being rejected and you're having a hard time enduring through that, get support, get support. Okay. And that support can look like prayer. It can look like booking a free consultation with, with me. It can look like talking to a friend, but you need the right, you want to get the right type of support. Um, you don't want to try to make yourself accepted. Like sometimes people, some of these self-help books are about getting us accepted by other people, you know, where we become what other people want us to be. Our uh, self-esteem is external by performance and the things that we're doing. Yeah, forbid. We already have value. We have value just by our created purpose. We don't have to become what other people want us to become. We simply are who he's created us to be. We, we embrace that and we walk in that 
And that's where the true power is in, in, in our, in our walk here. Okay. So let us look at a few scriptures here today. Okay. We're going to look at a few scriptures. Um, but before we do that, I just want you to take a moment and, and ask yourself, how many times have I let the spirit of rejection define me? How many times have I agreed with the lies? How many times did I let that feeling, that insecure and that lack of confidence and that low self-esteem tell me what I can and cannot do? How many times? How many times have I replayed a message that someone has said about me in my mind, hoping for a different expression or looking for a different group of people to embrace me? Take an inventory. Now, again, there's no reason to feel shameful or guilty. We're all wrestling and working out our salvation, right? We're all overcoming and overcoming is a process. I've got two scriptures that I'd like to share with you guys today. Let us turn to Isaiah 53, 3. Again, that's Isaiah 53, 3, and it reads, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of pains and knowing sickness, and as one from whom the face is hidden, being despised as we did not consider him. And verse 4 reads on, Truly he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains, yet he reckoned him, him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. So we see here in the book of Isaiah, Chapter 53, 3, we see our Messiah. He's being prophesied about. It says that he suffered rejection. He was rejected. He was rejected. He was heavenly. He came to save humanity. And he was rejected. He was rejected even from his own, even from what we, what we would say his own household. Like some of his, of some of his earthly brothers that were born to his mother, they mocked him. They mocked him. Even in his own house. But did Messiah let that rejection define him? In no way. He knew who he was. He knew who he was. He embraced, he embraced the rejection and he found his true value in the Father, in that fellowship and that connection with him. And some of you that are listening have had maybe some poor relationships with uh, an earthly father and may feel that God will, God is rejecting you or that he's punishing you, or you may feel like you need to perform because God may be unhappy with you, but that is not our God. Our God wants us to come on in. He loves us. He loves us. He wants us to come on in. And he has, he's given us his word to show us how to fellowship with him and to draw, draw nigh to him. His word says, draw nigh to me and I shall draw nigh to you. So get to the root of your issues. You may need some healing if you've been rejected by your earthly father or any type of um, male figure that had authority over you or, or even um, a husband potentially you know, may cause you to look at God in an incorrect fashion. And our closing scripture is 1 Peter 2, 9. And I think Peter does a really good job of reminding us of who we are in Messiah. And it reads, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a set apart nation, a people for a possession that you should proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light who once we were not a people, but now the people of God, who had not obtained compassion, but now obtained compassion. This is who we are. If you're listening to this podcast, I assume that you are a believer. And if you are a believer in Messiah, you have been born again by the blood of the Lamb. And that makes you a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a set-apart nation, a people for a possession, and see, the spirit of rejection comes to get you to go into agreement that you have no value, that you have no value. And we need to reject that. A chosen race, a royal priesthood. These are the things that we need to remind ourselves of. So as we get ready to conclude here, I want everyone that is listening, that is 
given in to the spirit of rejection, let's just repent. I think we've all been there. Sometimes the spirit of rejection doesn't necessarily thrive in our life. But at any point in time, any of us can get, can experience a spirit of rejection. And usually it's something that it's, it's a language that tries to get us to keep from saying what we really should say or keep us from doing what we really should do. Let's just take a moment and repent. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, Father, forgive us. Forgive us for every time we have listened to the spirit of rejection. For Father, today we choose to turn away, to turn away from the lies, to embrace the truth, the truth of your word. Your word tells us that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Your word tells us that our Messiah was rejected, but he was received by you. And Father, some of the listeners have been rejected, but I hear it, Father. I hear it that they are, they are accepted by you and you are of ultimate value. And Father, I just thank you that, 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 you, that you love us, that you see us, and that you have accepted us, and that you have paid the price that, that, that we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I thank you that you've sent us an advocate, as a helper, your Holy Spirit, that we can do the same works, if not greater things that Messiah did while he was here on earth. So, Father, I just pray for each and every listener. I pray that the spirit of rejection, that that chain would just fall off of each and every listener, and that they would renew their mind, and that every word here that has glorified you and that is acceptable in your eyes, Father, and according to your word and your will and your purpose, that you would bring forth increase. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray and I thank thee, Father. Hallelujah. This concludes episode six of overcoming emotional challenges. Today we talked about embracing rejection. Embrace it, Messiah did, and find your true value in God. So until next time, have an overcomer day. I am cheering for you. Shalom. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Overcoming Daily with Anna Johnson. Tune in again next time where Anna will continue to give you tips for overcoming daily. overcoming daily. And to stay updated, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. You are an overcomer. You're called to overcome. And if you found value in this episode, please share it on social. Share it on social. Sign up for a free coaching session free coaching. with Anna Johnson, Anna Johnson at sacredlifecoaching.com. Sacredlifecoaching.com. Until next time, have an overcomer day. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world.